Hello and welcome. I thought I'd just post this video as quickly as I could because I'm painting my custodian guard and uh, in my unboxing and review of the uh, Legio Custodes uh, Telemon Heavy Dreadnought I did say that I'd do another video of him uh, once the rules came out. Now if you don't know he became available for pre-order on Friday the Friday just gone the 30th of June so that's over a, a month um, I think it's I think it was about five weeks uh, since you could buy him at the uh, Warhammer Fest so that's quite a good exclusivity Magnus was a week after that I think the Thunderhawk was the week after that um, so yeah that, that's quite a good uh, amount of time so yeah he'll cost you 72 pounds which is exactly the same as a uh, Leviathan Dreadnought. I must say straight away, he is a work in progress. You could probably tell because I've uh, got all the, the the metallic parts. Well, not that, but the metallic uh, parts are quite quite shiny, and the uh, the red isn't washed or highlighted, and the missiles don't have the the white tips on. I'm still deciding whether to put white tips on or not. It would work with the rest of my army. Anyway, uh, so the rules are available on Forge World's website uh, too. One thing that they said in the seminar and the Fortwell seminar is that they're sticking with um seventh edition i mean who knows they, they might adopt eight ed edition at a later date but there's so many of those sort of 80 pound books now um that they pretty much be redundant i know that there's a lot of fluff in them but there's a lot of fluff in the codexes that are out for games workshop but nonetheless they've released the rules which are the you know seventh edition rules for for the model the unit is 300 points it counts as a heavy support choice uh in talons of the emperor army list uh which is found in you know uh, book seven inferno uh its stat line is weapon skill six ballistic skill five strength nine front and side armor 13 rear 12 initiative five four attacks and four hull points and what i want to do is just compare that with uh, the leviathan dreadnought um, so it's got a better weapon skill than Leviathan, same same ballistic skill, uh, but a better strength of 9 instead of the 8. Got the same armour, it's got a better initiative at 5, same attacks and same hold points. And Leviathan is uh, 270 points and then you've got to pay for the for the weapons. Um, which you do for, for this Dreadnought 2. It's a walker and a character. It's war gear, it's got two Telemon Sacist with uh, inbuilt Proteus plasma projectors. Um, that's obviously the Sacedus and they're the plasma projectors. Uh, it's also got a, a torso mounted spiculus bolt launcher there. Smoke launchers, searchlight, extra armor, armored ceramite, and a multi-layer refractor field, which I don't think I've seen before. Uh, it might be on something, I can't remember, but help me out, put it in the comments. Uh, special rules, move through cover, unyielding sentinel, and indomitable charge. It can exchange either or both of its Sestus for an Arachna Storm Cannon, uh, which is this this beast of a weapon here. What I've done is is I've sort of I say followed uh, Forge World's sort of paint scheme and uh, painted the barrels black, um, which sort of coincides with the custodian uh, weapons when I do paint those black. Um, so that that's what I've gone for. So the special rules, the indomitable charge, uh, when charging the model inflicts D6 hammer of wrath uh, hits rather than just one, which is a little bit like uh, the crushing charge of the Leviathan, where the model inflicts two hammer of wrath attacks, gains plus one initiative uh, in the assault phase for any turn in which it charges. So it doesn't gain that extra initiative, but it has D6 hammer of wrath. That's better. Uh, instead of just having, I mean, you guaranteed one, so even if you mess up, you're still going to have one Hammer of Wrath, wrath hit. Um, but uh, you've got a good chance of, of getting, obviously, more than that. Unyielding Sentinel. If the model suffers a penetrating hit, you, you roll two dice and determine the result on the vehicle damage table. Uh, and the highest roll is disregarded before the final results are decided. Now, the Leviathan doesn't have that, but it does have a reinforced Atomantic Shielding. It ha which gives it a 4 plus invulnerable and uh, if it suffers vehicle explode damage add plus d3 strength and plus d3 to the radius of the blast um, which sort of coincides a little bit 
to the, the multi-layer refractor field, which I'll talk about. So the multi-layer refractor field uh, confers a 4 plus and vulnerable save, um, increasing to 3 plus against weapons with a blast special rule or that use the template of any kind. So it doesn't have this explodes extra um, rule or anything like that, uh, and it basically just gives it a, a 4 plus and vulnerable, same as the Leviathan, but blast or a template 3 plus. That's, that's pretty decent. Okay, uh, so the weapons then. Mine's equipped with the Arachnus Storm Cannon. Um, it's got two firing modes. Uh, it's got Concentrated Blast or Burst Fire. Now before in Book 7, uh, we've seen uh, a couple of different um, Custodes uh, weapons. Arachnus um, type, they've been the Arachnus Blaze Cannon and the Arachnus Heavy Blaze Cannon. But now we have the Storm Cannon. And it works a little bit like the other two actually, um, quite similar to the Heavy Blaze Cannon. So you've got a Concentrated Blast, which is range 72 inches, Strength 9, AP 1, Heavy 2, Exoshock, a Burst Fire, which is range 48 inches, Strength 7, AP 3, Heavy 7. Uh, and let me just talk about the Exoshock before I talk about the, the, the weapon. So Exoshock, if it scores a penetrating hit on the target, uh, you roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, a second automatic penetrating hit is inflicted on the same target, uh, which cover saves may not be taken. So that's pretty decent. The way I'm reading it, if you score two penetrating hits on 4 pluses, you get an extra two. That's, that's horrific. So I'll compare it to the Heavy Blaze Cannon. Now the Heavy Blaze Cannon, um, which is uh, strength 10 for... Uh, concentrated blast it's only it's only heavy one but it is exoshock so you get an extra shot here at the same inch range and um, but one less strength and the burst fire again it's one less strength it's strength seven instead of eight um, but it's more shots it's heavy seven shots instead of uh, heavy four um, and at 48 inch range that's going to be horrific seven shots uh, wiping out um, you know, Space Marines or anything with, with AP3. I mean, you're primarily going to be going up against uh, Space Marines. But with the Strength 7, um, that's quite decent too. And if we just compared it to the, the Leviathan's uh, Storm Cannon. Leviathan's Storm Cannon is uh, half the range at 24 inch. It's the same strength, same AP, but it's only heavy 6. Um, but it does get Sunder. So there you go. There you go. You're getting one better shot, but... At double the range so that that's an improvement and I'd actually wish that the Leviathan's um, storm cannon was like 36 inch range um, that would be that'd be excellent uh, or even 48 because they, they do look like auto cannons slightly I mean they it certainly looks bigger weapon than uh, storm camp the arachnus storm cannon anyway um, the, pla the Proteus Plasma Projector, which when I first saw the model, I didn't know what on earth these were. I thought they were flamers or melter guns or something like that. Um, what they are is it's a template weapon. It's strength 5, but it is AP 2. Assault 1 gets hot. So it says two telemonsesis with inbuilt Proteus Plasma Projectors. Um, to me, that sounds like there's more than one, but I would go to, as far as to say one Sestus one plasma projector um because it doesn't say anywhere that you know because because otherwise the proteus plasma projector on the weapon profile it would say you know assault two and then that would make sense uh it would be great if it was a two shot template weapon um but it's also got this get gets hot rule and the sastus itself it's a melee weapon its strength is times two again i'd always look at strength times two to be um, 18 in this case, but but the rule book will say, well, you know, Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons, they times the strength by two up to a maximum of, of 10, I think it is. So, yeah, you, you're just getting one plus strength for that, um, I would have thought. Uh, but it is AP2, it's got Shred and Murderous Strike, which is one of the, the key things in this. Murderous Strike, uh, they cause an instant death on roll to wound of a six. Um, so remember, it's got four attacks, uh, charging that's five you know you have two Sestus uh, claws with it you've got six attacks on the charge Ini uh, initiative five with the murderous strike um, and, and weapon skill six so there's a high chance you're going to be hitting with this thing and at strength 10 there's a very high chance you're going to be wounding and those sixes this is a uh, quite a good contender for for wiping out um, special characters anyway 
let's move on to the the final weapon in all of this which is the spiculus bolt launcher uh this weapon right here um it's a range of 48 inches it's strength five but this is where it lets it down it's only ap4 now i was really hoping for an ap3 weapon now and and if that was the case this dreadnought would be the ultimate sort of space marine killing machine it really would i would have rather it be heavy three shots instead of heavy five and and then have the ap as three so you, at least you get three three good shots um you know that, that can sort of insta kill space marines i suppose but it's ap4 it's heavy five rending and volley fire um so at least it's rending uh so strength five not too bad and you do get your five shots and then let me just talk about uh volley fire so uh if the dreadnought doesn't move in the movement phase it can double the number of shots fired by the weapon and the relentless special rule doesn't allow models to move and claim the benefit from the the special rule so it irons that sort of special rule out and um, so yeah you could get 10 shots 10 rending shots at 48 inch range um and then you couple that with uh seven shots at 48 for the burst uh fire you know you're looking at 17 shots there uh, from this little uh, custodian dreadnought of 300 points. Let's not forget, this is only sort of 50 points more than a land raider, but it's got some excellent rules. It really has. And then when you fire in sort of 10 shots instead of you know heavy three AP3, then that's where it sort of makes sense um, that it can just fire all these along with that uh, storm cannon. I think it's a big upgrade compared to the Leviathan. That better weapon skill, the better initiative. You know, it's still got its four plus and vulnerable save, and it it Sastus, uh, you know, can inflict uh, instant death. You know, five attacks from that thing. I think it's a absolute meat grinder of a of a dreadnought. Anything Space Marine or or below is is gonna get wrecked uh, against dreadnoughts. You're only getting your strength ten. So that's where the, you know, the Leviathan with its siege drill um, has its uh, has an advantage, um, and it also has its its melter guns in in its fists. Um, but still, this is a very potent anti armor, um, anti elite troop dreadnought, um, and it has the ability to pick off uh, heavily armored targets either either in close combat um, or or from distance at that seventy two inch range with the with the exo shock um you know just layering on those those extra penetrating hits anyway hope you've enjoyed this video it's been uh, a pleasure to bring to you hopefully you have enjoyed this video hopefully it's been uh, useful uh, and yeah hopefully you'll you'll see this uh, dreadnought and the rest of the custodies uh, behind him finished at some point soon thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects